Hello people, welcome back to my channel and let's see what is Google protocol buffer. So you must have heard about this REST API term and then this GraphQL and in conjugation with all these terms, you must have also heard about this Google protocol buffer and gRPC servers. So let's learn some details about the Google protocol buffer which powers the gRPC servers. So it is developed by Google. So this particular uh, framework, you can say a software or you can say a protocol was basically developed by Google and the Google protocol buffer helps you to define your structure. So the most important thing that it uh, helps you is to do the structure definition for your data. Like you have JSON from JSON, you can define your data. If there is XML from that also you can define your data. Same way Google protocol buffer also helps you to define the structure of your data. It helps to define the contract between the client and the server. So whenever you design an application, it is always a client and server based. There's a server and there's a client client calls the server and basically server responds to the uh, API call or you can say the request. So it helps to define a contract between client and the server. So let's say there's a microservice. It can be any learning management system. It can be a payment system, anything. And this microservice exposes some API. So there will be a API one request and API one response. Same way there will be API two request and then API two response. What Google protocol buffer helps you to do is it helps you to define the contract like the API one request contract will be there and API one response contract will also be there and all the clients need to adhere to that contract so that everything works in a seamless manner. So this is basically for defining the contract between the client and the server. So let's take an example of user registration system. So you are trying to create a application where you want to register some user. So there's a user and there are some properties associated with that user. So there can be a first name, there can be a last name, there can be an email, password, phone number, age, and then address. So these are different fields that you want your user to have. And you also want that whenever a client is calling you. So these are the fields that need to provide every either everything can be mandatory or like few things can be mandatory. So this Google protocol buffer will help you to define this contract or the structure of your data. So you will define something like this. The contract will be defined as a message, the name of the contract that is create user request, then the first name, last name, email, password, phone number, age and address. And you also define the data type here. I have kept it simple, like for age also, I'm taking it as a string, but you can treat it as int 32 or something else. We'll see later, like what are the different data types that are defined by Google protocol buffer. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six namings, or you can say positions given, which has importance using serialization and deserialization of the data. We'll see that also. So this is the message that will define and it is a contract that the server and the client need to adhere that, okay, there is a create user request. So all these fields are necessary. If you send any unwanted field, then that will not be respected by the server and your request will be rejected or that field will not be consumed into your database or into your server. So Google protocol buffer is language neutral. What does that mean is you define the contract once in the Google protocol buffer file and the extension is dot proto file. So you write your definitions there only once and then you generate language specific code bases from the proto file using the proto compiler. So once you define the contract, that's it, you are done with that. And then for any language, let it be Node.js, Python, Java, Golang, anything, you just need a proto compiler for that usage. And then using that proto compiler, you can generate the classes for your different languages. So let's say there's an employee proto and there's a proto compiler. So the proto compiler is also given by Google itself and you can use it to generate different uh, files. So there's a contract in Java, there's a contract in C++, there's contract in Python. So you are using one employee.proto file and using that you can use the proto compiler, which will help you to generate the contract in Java, contract in C++ and contract in, in Python. We will create more videos on that, like how you can use proto buff for different languages. You will see that later on, but for now you need to understand that it is language neutral. You define a single employee.proto file and using this proto compiler, you can generate stubs for different languages and you can use it easily. 
okay so next thing is what it is fast as compared to json so json is also used for transferring data from the client to the server or among different servers this is the most widely used thing like json which is used mostly in rest api architecture so json is also used to define the contract but protocol buffer is fast and compact so where uh, the protocol buffer has the advantage it is fast and it is compact but json is not fast and compact so unlike xml and json which are human readable so you can just see the uh, data when you are passing between the servers like if it is xml or json you can just see the data and read it but protocol buffer uses binary format so there is a serialization and deserialization happening in the background which converts it into a binary format which is more compact and faster so let's say there is a 1 kb of data 1 kilobyte of data so if you are trying if you are using json or xml it would be more than 1 kb or it would be around 1 kb but if you are using protocol buffer so it will be less than the 1 kb size because it is in binary format it uses interface definition language so there is a language definition provided by google through which you can write your protobuf files or dot proto files so the contract of the protocol buffer is defined using a standard language definition called interface definition language so this is one example like if you want to define a employee contract then it will be a message employee and then you can provide name id email and you can also say okay string is the type int 32 is the type then string is the type for email it is an optional field it is a required field everything you can provide here let's go to the browser here and let's search for google protocol buffer so the first thing is what protocol buffers uh, and this is protocol this protobuf.dev is the site and you can see the whole documentation is present here related to different languages also C++, C Sharp, Dart, Go. So there is one file only .proto but you can use the generated classes or other things for multiple languages and you can use it. So you define a simple let's say message is the person and then you can just when you compile it using the proto compiler you will get a builder file and you can use to build person objects. So in Java in C++ you can use it in this way. So if you go here there is language guide for proto2 and proto3 so these are the different uh, semantics where or different proto version language definitions so you need to use proto3 because this is most recent one so you can go through this documentation and see what are the different things that are present let's say for example if you want to see scalar type values so what are the different scalar type values is double float in 32 and how it is used in different languages it is present here so when we'll create some projects using google protocol buffer uh, in the next videos i'll be creating a user management system in java using this google protocol buffer so you can use it and understand what are different scalar value types what are default values what are immunizations you will see all these things in the later videos you can go to my website that is selfdots.in and here you can read through new blog posts that are coming if you want to learn this google protocol buffer so i have already written a blog post here that is if i search protocol and what is protocol buffer so the whole details are listed here all the diagrams and everything are present so you can go through this also to understand more so hope you like this video on the protocol buffer this is the simplest video to understand what is protocol buffer we'll go into the details in later videos so thank you for watching my video if you want to support me you can go to my channel or any video and use this thanks button to support me and please share these videos with other people. Thank you very much.